We've all had hunts that start unorganized and chaotic from forgetting your release, scrambling to get organized, or just trying to beat the sunrise. Most of these hunts have a new self-determined baseline of lower expectations after dealing with the hassle to get to the stand. But what if I told you sticking to your plan and continuing with the hunt could yield you a deer of many lifetimes? That's exactly what happened to Andre Moffitt on November 12, 2017. Up here is a deer that was killed in uh, Indiana by a young lady named Andrea Moffitt. Became very, very well-known deer here in recent years. But it's, it's possibly the biggest deer ever killed by a woman um, as far as sheer frame and real estate. The deer, actually, the sheds off of it from the year before are called the Indiana Legend Sheds, and it's a 220-inch 10-pointer. But as this, he's only an 8-point and got a big flyer off the back and still is 188. And so, tremendous deer goes over 200 as a 9-point. Uh, 24 inches inside, 16-inch 2s, 14-inch 3s, 30-inch main beams, and 6-inch mass. Tremendous, tremendous whitetail. The story of the Moffat buck starts in October of 2013 when her brother-in-law spotted a big buck bedded in a strip of timber. The deer was clearly in the 150 to 160 inch range and it was the first time anyone had laid eyes on the big buck. In 2014, the buck was never spotted by the family, but the story picks back up when Andrea's father-in-law spotted the giant typical in October when doing some tillage work in the field. Later that season, the deer wasn't seen again until the antlerless season when they spotted the buck on the move. The neighbor mentioned he got a trail camera picture of the buck that appeared to just shed its antlers. They started looking for them and matched up the giant set of antlers 400 yards apart from each other in a bedding area. After the sheds were found, it was that point they became very serious about doing their very best to shoot the giant deer. As hunters, we've all been here before thinking about what we're missing if we didn't get out to hunt that day. Or what if we picked a different spot instead of the one we're at? This is a story about how one of the largest bucks shot in Indiana was almost one of the biggest what ifs in Indiana whitetail hunting history. The Moffat buck was shot on opening morning of Indiana rifle season. However, it seemed as though nothing could go right that morning after Andrea and Wes decided to scratch their two sons from the hunt since they hadn't prepared themselves the night before and they forgot their shooting sticks at the house. Despite all of this, Andrea convinced Wes to continue on and give it a chance as it was opening day after all. Now remember, this buck had only been spotted a handful of times over the span of four years leading up to this hunting season, but it just wasn't the Moffat family chasing the whitetail. Conversations between neighbors made it clear that this legendary buck wasn't a secret. After making it into each of their stands, Andrea had spotted zero movement for the first half hour she was in her blind. But not a few moments later, she spotted a doe crossing a CRP field she was overlooking and closely following was the Boone and Crockett buck that they so desperately wanted to connect with. Although she couldn't see much initially due to the distance between her and the trophy, she recognized the tines and knew that this was the one she had been hearing about and so rarely seen. Using an H&R 44 mag, she waited for a chance to shoot. After lining up the shot, she calmed herself down, took a deep breath, then Andrea pulled the trigger and there was nothing. No movement, no noise. She rechambered another round and tried to spot the buck. However, with the height of the grass, she could only see a tine sticking up above the grass. Unsure of exactly what she was seeing, she messaged her husband, Wes, who had heard the shot, they grouped up, and together they went out to find what had happened. Overwhelmed by what they saw, they couldn't believe their eyes. Andrea had tagged the giant buck in the exact spot they had last seen it. So let's talk about the rare attributes of this buck. Take the growth score of 200 inches exactly as a basic 5x4 typical. That's incredible each main beam is just shy of 30 inches the left antler grosses 93 and 4 8 inches thanks to a giant 15 and 6 8 g2 its counterpart on the right is 14 and 3 8 when you factor in that the inside spread is over two feet wide you get the picture that this rack is indeed world class it's among the few that are extremely wide but don't seem to be due to the incredible height. There are 12 inches of side to side difference and a seven and four eighths inch flyer point shooting off the back of the right G2. If this non-typical tine hadn't grown, the buck would have netted 188 inches as an eight pointer. Even with the abnormal point deducted, this buck's 180 inches and four eighths net score puts him into exclusive company as one of the world's top eight points of all time. Now, wait a minute. Any legendary buck that reaches that age in class has to have more stories and narrative around it. If you're wondering 
what that deer looked like in the 2015 season? Well, the answer would be nothing short of a legend. This is the Indiana Legend Sheds. This is the 225 set of antlers, or 220 10-pointer. The deer above it is a deer I actually shot that scores 185 and 4 eighths, and it's 24 inches wide. That should give you a little idea of how big the Indiana Legend Moffat sheds are. It's a 29.7 inside. It has, this is the world record five point antler at 100 inches basically. And you know, with the inside spread, like I say, the deer would net 210 inches. So it'd be the biggest five by five of all time easily. In short, it was one of the largest typical bucks to ever exist that season. The buck grew a perfect five by five frame and would have been in the elite club of grossing over 220 inches typical. In fact, according to North American Whitetail, there are only 10 deer known with typical set of antlers in that class. All but one of those 10 have a 6x6 six six or 7x7 seven seven frame. Nonetheless, the Moffat buck from two years before Andrea tagged the buck was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, 10 points to walk the earth. Indiana gets a bad rap for a long rifle season, but some could argue after the Moffat buck and the Huff buck, Indiana could be one of the most underrated states in the country to tag a world-class typical.